Hello everyone, my name is Eduardo Lamas and in this video we are going to talk about innate non-phagocytic cells and their main functions. Non-phagocytic cells are divided into granulocytes and natural killer cells. As you can see, granulocytes are divided into mast cells, basophils, and eosinophils. Hematopoiesis is the formation of blood cellular components. This is a process that begins in the bone marrow. As we can see here, basophils, eosinophils, and mast cells are derived from a common myelor progenitor. On the other hand, natural killer cells are derived from a common lymphoid progenitor along with T cells. In tissues, you will find phagocytic cells, such as macrophages and dendritic cells. However, you will also find mast cells. Natural killer cells are large granular lymphocytes. They have two main markers, CD16, an FC receptor, and CD56, both on their surfaces. Unlike T cells, natural killer cells are not specific for antigen recognition. They have no TCR or CD3. Natural killer cells instead recognize an alter self what I mean by this is that natural killer cells recognize the reduction of MHC1 molecules on the surfaces of cells caused by certain viruses and cancers. Activated natural killer cells are cytotoxic and stimulate macrophages by secreting interferon gamma. Mm -hmm. The mechanisms of killing by natural killer cells are similar to those used by cytotoxic T lymphocytes and include perforin, which makes holes in the target cell membrane and allows for Granzyme to get in. Granzyme is a proteolytic enzyme that degrades the host cell proteins. In addition, it activates the caspase enzyme system to trigger apoptosis or programmed cell death within the host cell. Mast cells participate in inflammation. When they are activated, they will release platelet activating factor histamine, and other pro-inflammatory cytokines. These molecules will activate endothelial cells to increase vascular permeability. The increase in vascular permeability allows fluid from blood vessels to enter the site of infection, leading to edema. The activation of the endothelial cells also aids in the chemotaxis of immune cells to the site of infection. The result of all of these actions will be inflammation. Mast cells are found in most tissues, including skin, and they release, as said before, histamine. Histamine contracts all smooth muscle cells in the bronchioles, GI tract, and the uterus, as well as smooth muscle fibers in endothelial cells. However, histamine relaxes vascular smooth muscles, such as that found in the arterioles. Platelet activating factor, PAF for short, causes platelet aggregation and amplifies the production of lipid mediators. More specifically, the actions of mast cells can be explained in the GI tract, the eyes and airways, and blood vessels. In the GI tract, mast cells will lead to an increase in fluid secretion and peristalsis, leading to diarrhea and vomiting. In the eyes and airways, they will increase mucus secretion, cause congestion, and lead to blockage of the airways. In addition, they can cause swelling. In the blood vessels, they will increase blood flow and permeability. Furthermore, they will increase the flow of lymph to the lymph nodes and can cause hypotension with or without anaphylactic shock. Eosinophils also participate in inflammation. Two of the main factors released by eosinophils are histamine and major basic protein, or MBP. These molecules will lead to increased vascular permeability, chemotaxis of immune cells, and the killing of parasites, all of which are characterized by inflammation. Eosinophils have a bilobed nucleus 
and intracellular lysosomal granules that stain well with eosin acidic dyes. They will be seen as pink or eosinophilic on the image. Eosinophils are involved in allergic reactions, asthma, inflammatory reactions, and the defense mechanisms against parasites. In addition to histamine, the granules release major basic protein, which mediates the death of parasites and protozoa. A high number of eosinophils in the blood, also known as eosinophilia, is a marker for parasitic infections as well as allergic reactions, especially those that are drug related. In addition, eosinophils can be seen in collagen vascular diseases, such as rheumatoid arthritis. Basophils are also involved in inflammation. Among the molecules released by these cells, we have heparin, histamine, and leukotrins, LTs for short. These molecules can cause anticoagulation, vasodilation, increased vascular permeability, and the killing of ectoparasites, or parasites living on the skin. These reactions are also characterized by inflammation. Basophils and mast cells contain an FC receptor for IgE, which participates in type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. Basophils play a role in anticoagulation by releasing heparin and in vasodilation and increased vascular permeability by releasing leukotrins and histamine. As mentioned before, they also participate in killing parasites living on the skin. Finally, basophilia is a common indicator in chronic myeloleukemia, or CML, where you can see an increase of up to 20% of basophils in the cell. When finished watching this video, please help us determine if it was helpful to you by using the thumb up or down option. Thank you.